Today I'm working on a dual 1225 turntable. And I haven't checked this one out yet, but uh, let's just plug it in and see if it does anything. Okay, when we lift up the tone arm, it should start to spin, which is not. So the first thing we need to do is to uh, check out the uh, the table and see whether whether the belt is broken. See, there a belt drive or a rim drive. To get under the under the table, we have to pop off this snap ring here. So I'm just going to pop that off, and then I can lift off the turntable, and we'll see that this one's actually a rim drive. So basically, you've got a motor that, that spins, and it turns this rubber drive pulley and that drive pulley pushes up against the turntable and drives the table. Now looks like we've got some uh, we get some grease maybe that's sticking here. Right, see that? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lubricate this and then we might have to put some rubber renew on this tire here depending on the, whether it's sticking or not but we've got a mechanism that's getting gummed up on this one. So what's happening here is underneath the uh, the, the pivot here is sticking. You can see The pivot arm here is gummed up, so I have to take the idler assembly apart so that I can lubricate that piece. So I'm going to do that by just popping off the uh, retaining clip. It's a cut washer that holds the rim drive idler in place. Okay, there we go. I got the cut washer off. I had it kind of had, had it, I'm sorry I had to hold my hands over top there. You guys couldn't see how I was digging it out, but I, I didn't want to risk having the uh, cut washer go flying. This is the uh, assembly here that I actually have to lubricate. And as you can see, it's got a it's got a snap ring or an e-clip as they call it on here as well. We're gonna lift the whole table mechanism out. How we do that on this unit. So we just loosen off the transport screws so that we can pull them in like that. That will allow the table to lift out so that I can access the entire unit from the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this clip so that I can lift this piece out and clean up the grease that's dried up underneath it. So that's got the clip off. Now if I take out the lever assembly, I can clean this and lubricate it. Using a Q-tip with alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, I'm going to clean the post off. And I'm going to clean the bearing by just pushing a, a Q-tip soaked with isopropyl through there. And now the bearing is ready to go back together. 
I am going to put oil on it, but I'm going to put the bearing back together first before I do that. Bring it up like that, and I'll get my oil. Get a drop of oil. And work it through so that it, it coats the entire collar. And now we can put the E-clip back in place. Snap that in place. That's ready to go back on. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to also clean the bearing here. Or the, the shaft for the bearing. I'll let it dry for a minute. I'll do the same for the bearing here inside the drive tire. You're going to let that dry for a few minutes, then we'll lubricate it and put the drive idler back on. And then we'll lubricate the bearings for the motor, the top and the bottom for the synchronous motor. This is a basic four pole motor, this one, so it's a high speed motor as opposed to some tape or some, sorry, some turntables that use a lower speed motor. We're going to lubricate the motor bearing, we're going to lubricate the shaft, and I'm also going to lubricate and clean up the main. Uh, cam gear that operates the mechanism. This dual 1225 is getting a full overhaul here tonight. One thing I'm going to do also is I want to make sure that uh, the cartridge doesn't get damaged so I'm just going to remove the cartridge. And how you remove the cartridge on this type of head shell is you just push back and the cartridge just pops off. I'm going to do that because it's got a, the uh, owner of this unit has a nice Empire 2000 a cartridge and I don't want to risk the, dam the, the needle getting damaged while I'm working on it so I'm just going to set it aside that way I don't have to worry about uh, the needle and cartridge being damaged while I'm working on the turntable. We'll balance it after here as well. The drive idler is ready to go back on. We're going to put a bit of oil onto the bearing itself here and we'll put another little bit onto the shaft. Just one drop is all really that's needed. Too much oil is worse than not enough in many cases. So we don't want a ton of oil on here, but we do want enough to maintain uh, good lubrication. So now we just put on the plastic, uh, it's a cut washer that goes on top here to hold the idler tire in place. And that holds that in place. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use my, my Q-tip here. I'm just going to wipe up any, any oil that's spilt around the edge here. I don't want to uh, have any uh, oil leak out and because when this thing is running, centrifugal force would obviously, if it gets onto the tire, it's going to spin out and it's going to get on my, my rim drive and it's going to cause it to slip. So I want to make sure I clean up any oil that is, any excess oil that is spilled around outside of the bearing. So I'm going to get a Q-tip, we'll soak it up with isopropyl alcohol, that will that'll clean up any, any oil spill. And again, I'm not putting it in where the bearing is itself. I don't want to, of course, dry out the lubricant that I just put in. I'm just running it around the outside edges here just to clean up any oil that may have dripped and gotten outside of the bearing. There. That will keep that 
in good shape. We're going to do the same for the main bearing over here. We're going to lubricate this, but before I do that, I'm going to service the bottom side of the mechanism. So how these automatic mechanisms work is on the top, there's a, a lever that kicks over. You can see it up here that kicks over, and what it does is it catches a cog it's on the underside of the turntable assembly. So when that little copper lever kicks over, it hits this cog, which starts the split gear turning. The gear will make one revolution. So if you notice, there's a, a dead spot here where there's no teeth. The cog kicks over and causes this gear to engage. So it kicks the gear over like that. Now the turntable that's turning causes this gear to make one full revolution. Like that, to reset the mechanism. To either start or stop, depending on which way you push the lever. This one will either start playing or it will retract and, and reject and stop. And it's all done through this lever here, whether it's pushed one way or the other. If it's pushed one direction, when it turns, it causes the main cam to follow this path. And if it's going the other direction, it causes the main cam to stay on the outside and follow a completely different path. Right? So you can see the two you can see the two operations here. So one of these is for if I kick this over towards start, this will now, this lever here pulls this cam over. This causes the cam to follow the inner movement, which actually pulls the tone arm over towards the record, and it stopped mechanically either the 12 or the, the 7 inch position, depending on what record is playing. That brings the arm in and then it drops it and if I push it the opposite direction to stop the play it doesn't operate this cam lever so this process lifts the tone arm and it moves it back to the resting position and then drops the arm See that's that's gummed up there, so I have to I have to lubricate it. It's sticking up. It should drop down like that. But it's not, it's sticking. So that's part of the problem is this this lever here is gummed up. I have to Actually, this is the one that actually drops the record. If you've got a, a stacking spindle, the spindle that's on this is for a single record, but if you had a stacking spindle, this is the piece that would actually drop the next record down. When the gear, when the gear starts to move, it pulls up like this first, because the, the cam gear here has elevation to it as well as moving the arm back and forth. As the cam gear starts to move, you'll see this will lift up. That's what lifts the tone arm up. And then it moves back and forth. And now it drops back down again. That's what moves your tone arm up and down. So what I need to lubricate is I need to lubricate this gear. I need to lubricate this arm here that's getting stuck. Um, usually what happens is the grease gets dried up inside here and this, this pivot starts to stick. So we just have to clean out this groove and re-lubricate it with proper grease. That's generally all they have to do to these machines to make them work. It's just get this old grease out of here that gets gummed up. As you can see, they get really gummed up.
see the grease is pretty bad. I'm going to use my standard uh, Molly Coat grease. That stuff is about as good as any stuff that I've got. So we'll just put some grease into the groove here. and spin the gear around a few times so that it will spread the grease around. No sticking on this one. Now this lever here is sticking a bit, so we're going to lubricate the pivot point here. Let's put a drop of oil in there. And I'll put another drop of oil on the back of the shaft here. I'm going to put a drop of oil on all of the other mechanical pivot points. Also pull the motor apart and lubricate the bearings on the motor. So how we're going to do that is I'm going to pull off the, the base here, take the bearing apart and actually pull the motor apart to do this. We'll take the whole motor out of this thing. This is the magnetic shield that I'm removing now. And there are a couple of shims in here. You got to make sure you don't lose them. There's the bottom bearing cap. Access the top side of the bearing. So I want to lubricate the bearings here. This is called a shaded pole motor, this one. So put a little bit of oil in the bearing there at the top. Lubricate that. Put the motor back in. Put the stator assembly back on to the rotor. Put some oil into our bottom bearing cap. Like that. Put the bottom bearing cap back on. This is a German made motor, this dual. Put back in our spacers.
put our screws back in. Now we can turn the deck over. some rubber renew and I'm going to put it on the tire here just to, to uh, soften up the edge of the uh, rim drive. Okay we got the stinky rubber renew out now this stuff. Get a q-tip soak with this stuff. And we're just going to put it around the edge of the tire here. What this does is this softens up the rubber, keeps it from cracking, and just gives you better friction, better traction. And it takes the oxidization off the end of the tire here. As you can see, cleaned it up pretty good. Let that dry, and then we'll put the table back together. Okay, now we'll put the cartridge back on and of course put our spindle in. Now this again, this is the single record spindle. There was another spindle that was available for this. It was a stacker that you could stack multiple records on this thing and it would change from one record to the next. Let's put the cartridge back in. Again, it just slides in place like that. And then you bring the arm forward. I'm going to plug this thing into my amplifier so we can test. Of course, we'll first of all balance the tone arm. Make sure that the tone arm, oh, it's really heavy. This thing was set to 5 grams, and I bet you it had about 15 grams on it. This was cranked all the way to 5 when I got it, so there's... There's pretty much balanced. Set it to like two, just two and a bit. And we'll set it to about two and a half of, uh, of anti-skate. Let's get a record. Okay, I have another warped record. Seems that a lot of my records are warped for some strange reason. <laughs> play that for more than a few seconds so we'll give YouTube a chance to reset and then we'll play some more okay let's get the music going Yes, I have a bit of a hum in there because I don't have a ground wire hooked up. I wouldn't say that my record was stored under unusually harsh conditions. This was stored in my record cabinet with all my other records all standing on edge. And I, I, I didn't think it, was, it got very warm, but obviously at some point it, the uh, temperature has gotten up a bit in my cabinet. And uh, I've ended up with a bunch of warped vinyl. <clears throat> Here's another one. Yeah. What the hell?
I don't know, it's like this thing is, it's almost like it's too light, but it's, it's, it's not. Okay, I know the problem. It's the adjustment, the height adjustment here. There's a, an adjustment here for the cueing arm lift. And it just, yeah, that's the problem. Okay, let me back my weight back here to about two and a half grams. That clip goes back in like that. That holds the platter in place. One last thing to do is to check the speed again. I have to turn out the uh, fluorescent lights that are uh, operating on electronic ballast. So now I've just got the 60 hertz. Actually, there's one that's still oh, got an electronic ballast up there, but under the 60 hertz, I should be able to see the stroke. So this is uh, 16 RPM, and this one here is 45. Where's our 33? Well, that's the 16 and 2 3rd and 45. Let's turn this over. This one's 33 and a third, and 78. So here's our 33 RPM. It should be the third one. The middle one here should be strobe, which should strobe, or should appear to be stationary at uh, 33 and a third. And as you can see, it's pretty close. But this turntable does have a pitch control, so we can adjust it and get it exactly correct. So what we want is we want this third. band to not appear to move. If I see if I turn the speed up, now you're seeing it's moving. If I turn the pitch control back, now it's not. Of course I'm just adjusting the pitch control right over here. So that's how you calibrate the speed on these units. Again you got to do it under lights that strobe at 60 or 120 um, Hertz, basically a fluorescent light with a magnetic ballast, 60 cycle waveform will cause 120 uh, flickers of light per second because there are 60 positive and 60 negative swings to each cycle or two cycles, positive and negative, 60 cycles per second, but there's a positive and a negative cycle. So that gives you 120 pulses of light and the strobe disc is calibrated so that it will appear stationary. Now watch what happens if I turn on my my fluorescent lights with the electronic ballast. Well you really don't get much uh, makes it tough to see. The, the camera actually is doing a better job. I can see it on uh, the camera looks better than in, in to my eye I can't see this. This is just a blur when this light is on or off. The other overhead one is not affected quite as much because there's a lot of light still coming from the overhead lights that are running on a magnetic ballast. But you can see it big time, even on the camera there. Right? The camera shutter is still showing you the same type of effect. If I shield this light, you'll see it different, right? There, that's about perfect. Anyway, I've got my needle guard on. Don't worry about that. This this needle has a has a little guard on it, and I have the little needle guard flipped down, so I don't have to worry about damaging it. I hope you enjoyed this video 
of servicing an old dual 12 25 turntable. Now this one can go back to its owner and provide many more years of service. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.